Uh, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Um, Mr Speaker, um, I, I want to thank the uh, previous member and say that generally, um, uh, like members on this side of the House, uh, List and constituency, uh, we are supportive of the bill. I was pleased to see that he uh, did not repeat in his, in his speech the comments that he made about the $700 million or a $1 billion that was lost to taxpayers' funds being small change, uh, as he did by way of interjection. I'm not one of the people who thinks that that unnecessary loss uh, is a matter uh, of small change. I, I do want to refer to the speech made by the Honourable Dr Nick Smith, uh, Nick Smith and, and wonder um, why he did not quote uh, that financial expert who he appointed to the ACC uh, board chair, uh, John Judge. I mean, John Judge is someone who, uh, in many of the things that he did, we disagree with, but a person of um, impeccable, in impeccable integrity uh, and, uh, and, Mr Speaker, uh, someone who uh, achieved the financial turnaround uh, for the ACC uh, that, that, that someone of his financial expertise uh, um, it was necessary uh, to, if, if the government was to do what it was going to do, and of course we disagree with it, but, uh, but he had integrity and he did a, did a very good job. And, and, and I, I, just wanted, I do want to quote from um, Mr Judge's comments on this ministry. Uh, he, he's called this ministry pathetic today. He has, he has, uh, has said that um, one of the ministers uh, needs to become acquainted with the truth. Which minister? Which minister? Uh, he, he has said that one of the ministers just tries to go and blacken good people's names. Order. Uh, Mr Speaker, this is John Judge. Must come back to yes. the purpose and the content of a second reading speech. Right, well, and, and of course the point that I'm getting to, uh, Mr Speaker, is that the purpose of this is to provide integrity within the financial markets. John Judge is someone who is, I think, universally accepted as having integrity, and he is commenting that this ministry does not. Uh, and Mr Speaker, you just then wonder uh, what right, what moral authority does the government have to bring in this sort of legislation and to promote it when the very ministers who are in charge of it are being questioned as to their own integrity. And I, and I, I just say when it comes to a question of um, Judith Collins or John Judge on a question of, uh, of truthfulness, I will go with John Judge. He is the person who I believe in that circumstance. Uh, and I'm very surprised that Nick Smith, uh, who was the minister who appointed Mr Judge to the ACC has not ex suggested that he be used further, uh, given his integrity and given his expertise in this uh, financial markets uh, area where his expertise uh, is absolutely uh, clear. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'd now like to go to page one uh, of the bill, which of course is, um, uh, is the contents uh, page, uh, and to look at, 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 at some of the headings. The, um, it is the non-bank deposit takers bill, and it's a bill which I haven't had a lot of work. Uh, I haven't been involved in a lot, and I'm, I'd be happy if the, uh, the National Party speaker who follows me wants to elucidate on some of the questions, because uh, I think I'm just looking around. Um, is there a Minister of Finance who's able to answer the questions? No, uh, but, but I'll put them down. I'm sure that the uh, minister, uh, when the minister becomes available, will, will answer them. And th that is, where it's a non-bank deposit taker, does that, involve, does that include people who get brown paper bags or plain envelopes from .com or Sky City? Is that a non-bank deposit taker if there are large cheques which are either anonymous or not anonymous, you know? They, they, they apparently had the name of the... They weren't bank checks. And, and, and I wonder whether um, a non-bank deposit taker could take anonymous deposits or not. And if there was a name on a cheque, whether for this purpose that would be anonymous 
uh, or, or, or not. And if so, if it's put into a bank account, in, in, into, a, into a non-bank account, uh, of course, a, a John Banks account might be a good way. If it was put into John Banks' account, um, whether there would be a requirement to record the source of the deposit or not. And that, you know, it's a relatively simple question, uh, and, and I hope in the purpose there, and, and, and in fact there's probably some interpretation uh, issues around that uh, as well, uh, whether uh, in it, in, in, uh, the, the, it is uh, on page 6, uh, running from page 6 uh, through to page 11, uh, are the interpretation sections, and the, and the question I want to ask uh, members opposite is whether within those five pages there is anything which will clarify whether John Banks is included as a non-bank deposit taker at the point he receives the plain envelopes or even the addressed envelopes uh, with the large tens of thousands of dollars worth of checks. And if it's a case that he, in that case, is a non-bank deposit taker, is he also a non-bank deposit taker when he receives brown paper bags stuffed with cash? If he receives a brown paper bag stuffed with cash, is he a non-bank deposit taker? The, I, I want to refer the Chair to and the, and the members opposite to Clause 6 of the Bill uh, within our preliminary provisions, and it's called the Related Party Defined. And I want to ask, in this particular circumstance, if the Act Party gets a brown paper bag full of money, and they discuss it at a tea party with the National Party in front of a whole pile of cameras, whether that makes the National Party a related party to the Act Party for the purposes of this legislation. And I, I don't know. I mean, they're clearly a re related party now. I mean, I, I think it's fair to say that the National Party, I don't think I can use the expression, um, they're having some, something done to them by, which is normally seen to be done within a marriage, um, by the Act at the moment. They're, they're basically being rooted, aren't they? I mean, they are, they are being stuffed. The, 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 the oh, National order, Party... Order, the order, National order, Party... Order, order, order. I think that word is completely unparliamentary and ask the member to withdraw it. Well, I, I, I withdraw, Mr Speaker. I, yeah. My question is whether John Banks should have at some stage, uh, Mr, Mr Speaker. Uh, the, the, so there's a, there's, a related party, uh, there's a related party question. Uh, Mr Speaker, the, the next question is whether Clause 9 applies in this. Clause 9 in this particular bill says that Act binds the Crown. Well, well, Mr Speaker, again, it's clearly a case. Well, uh, I mean, well, there's a bit of s &M involved in this particular case. I, th I, think, I think that it could well be that John Banks is, is getting the National Party in handcuffs for part of this relationship. Certainly there appears to be a binding of the Crown on the, behalf, on the part of John Banks uh, in this legislation. Money is being transacted. A non-bank deposit has been made. Uh, Mr Speaker, the Crown is being bound by Act. It's, it, it's exactly what it says in here, sir. Exactly the heading clause. Act binds the Crown. And, and Mr Speaker, if I, was, if I was John Key, I wouldn't want to be bound up by John Banks. If I was John Key, I would not submit to the handcuffing on the part of John Banks. Uh, Mr Speaker, the way that he is at the moment, um, I think, sir, I would be cutting the links. I would be cutting the links. I would be undoing the chains that is binding the National Party, the Government, the Crown to act. But, Mr Speaker, I think the classic is Clause 11. Clause 11, where it, that's a clause that is headed, no holding out. 
No holding out. And it's clear, sir, that John Key has not been holding out on John Banks. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I call David Bennett. Thank you, Mr Speaker.